Hey guys, Caleb here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about my favorite video gear of 2020. Now, this list isn't going to be the best gear that came out this year, but rather a list of gear that just, you know, gave me joy this year. Either things that made my life easier when it comes to filming videos here in the studio, or stuff that just made me happy and I really enjoyed. So, I'm gonna have everything down in the description if you wanna look at pricing and other information. And let's kick things off by talking about two different tripods that really, really helped me out this year. The first is right behind me, and it is the GH06 from E-Image. This is a great tripod if you need something a little more beefy, but you don't wanna move up to kind of an expensive option. I believe you can get the head and a nice set of sticks for around $600. So it's a great kind of middle of the road tripod and I've been using several of them here in the studio and just really, really dig them. The next tripod is one that you guys ask about constantly, especially this year, and that is going to be this smaller tabletop tripod. Now I have a different head on this particular tripod, but this is from iFootage and actually works with their entire monopod kit. So I've got one over here here holding up a camera that we'll talk about in a little bit. And here's a second one. And what I love about them is how beefy they are. It's really hard to show you in a video, but these things can hold a ton of weight. They also have uh, kind of a ball mount that's really dampened, so you can use it at the bottom of a monopod or use it like this with a tripod head. And there's quick release systems, so you can very quickly swap out, you know, a different head, a different, you know, light. I've used these for lights if you want a really nice kind of low boy setup. Uh, and then the legs are locking with ratchets so you can go ahead and customize, you know, the positioning of the leg. So just a all around really, really solid, heavy duty uh, tabletop tripod. I use it a lot for stuff like this where I wanna show off a camera and have it on the desk, uh, as well as getting really nice low shots. And of course you can pair it with monopod accessories from iFootage. Now let's talk about two cameras that I really dug this year. The first is the a7S III. It's probably no surprise that it's on this list. It came out this year. It's incredible. It isn't quite the perfect camera, at least in my opinion, but it is really darn close. And at $3,500, considering all you get, it's not bad. So I've been using this uh, almost exclusively for B-roll in the last couple of months, but it's still not my main camera, which is, believe it or not, the Panasonic S1, which most people just don't care about, but it's what I'm using right now. And the reason I use it is it is full frame and something about V-Log on these cameras is just my favorite. The color looks great. There's no blotchiness, which I've talked about a ton when it comes to Sony cameras. This camera, the A7S III, still has some weird stuff going on when you're working with log. Not the case on Panasonic's cameras. Now, if I was buying a camera today, I would use the Panasonic S5, which I've done a video on, and it's amazing. Really like that camera, but I own the S1, and it doesn't really make sense to sell it when I'm just gonna use it you know, on a set of sticks like this. Yes, the autofocus sucks, but for color, and just if you want a really great log image on a full frame camera, right now for me, the Panasonic S1 and S5 are still phenomenal. A bonus camera pick is going to be this, the Sony F3 cinema camera. I did a video on this bad boy and how you can get one for around 800 bucks. It only does 1080p, but just something about this camera speaks to me and I've had so much fun shooting with it. So it doesn't get a lot of use here in the studio. So if you want something that's just a ton of fun to shoot on and really, really powerful, check out the video I did talking about the F3. Next up, we're gonna talk about a filter that I used a ton this year and really enjoyed, and that is the Black Pro Mist filters. Now, these have been around forever. Uh, I just started really using them a lot this year. I'm using one right now. And what these filters do is they take highlights like my forehead, that light in the background, and they soften them. So here is a shot with the filter, and here's a shot without. You can clearly see there's a pretty big difference. There's multiple strengths of these. I have found for me personally, I really like the 1 8 one quarter is a little too strong. Uh, and if you're out in a bright scenario, it's gonna be definitely very bloomy. Uh, but I really, really dig 1 8 Pro Mist filters. They're solid, they've been around for a long time, and they just really kind of add some cinematic qualities and texture to your footage. Next on the list isn't here on the desk, but it is giant soft boxes. So a lot of people use something like the Aperture Light Dome, which is fine, but in my opinion, that's really designed for kind of a tight, tight shot. And I have found just using larger soft boxes does wonders 
for your lighting. So right now I'm actually using a 60 inch parabolic softbox with multiple layers of diffusion. This one's from iFootage, it's awesome, it's huge. And then another one I've been using exclusively for my B-roll setup is a glow softbox, which is also 60 inches, and that one's just your traditional octagon. These are all Bowen mounts, so they work great with your aperture lights, other uh, brands that use a Bowen's mount, uh, and I just really like them. It's amazing the difference going from a light dome size softbox to a 60 inch softbox. Larger your source, the more wrap you're going to get, and I just really, really prefer larger softboxes. Another item from the lighting department is going to be mirrors, which I've just done a video on, so you can check that out here on the channel. I'll put a card somewhere but really digging using mirrors, both small and large, to add some really interesting texture to my lighting. So I'm actually using one right now to fake this window light uh, on that lamp back there. While there are a lot of lights that I used and enjoyed this year, the number one is the Aperture MC. I have been using the snot out of these little things. I've purchased several more because I just keep using them. So we've got one actually in that lamp right now facing up, and I just, love them you can stick them anywhere they have magnets on them you can link them together aperture even sells a kit like this which has wireless charging built in it's just phenomenal so if you're looking for a small light these are hard to beat for around 100 bucks they do a lot they're really bright and again i just keep sticking them in all these different places and finding more uses for them so aperture mc really dig them. Something that I used a lot this year, purchased three of and just can't rave about enough are these Home Depot workbenches. I have three of them now and love these things. They're really affordable considering what all they can do. They come with casters, they're height adjustable for sit or stand modes, and they have a really nice wood top so you can mount stuff to them. I just love them. So I've got several small ones uh, as well as a giant one that we have in the live streaming little studio. So if you need something to put stuff on, you really can't beat those. Another one of my favorite things is the TMP8100, I believe it's called, teleprompter. I have several of these now and have been using them for either live streaming setups and even one for kind of a thumbnail you know, image. Really, really enjoying that teleprompter, especially when you pair it with a video monitor, which I've done a video on and you can check that out great hack. Switching gears a little bit, there's one book I'd really highly recommend you check out, and it's called Profit First. If you run a business of any kind or just want a different way to organize the way you deal with money, read that book or listen to it on Audible. Completely changed my business for the better um, in a huge way. I can't emphasize enough how much that idea that Profit First goes over in that book just completely changed the business for the better. So check it out definitely worth your time. Now let's switch over to computer stuff and talk about this, the 16 inch MacBook Pro from Apple. This is the first Apple laptop that I felt comfortable purchasing and using professionally. Uh, there's been tons of laptops from them that have worked fine, but this is the first one where I was like, I can comfortably use that every day without a proper desktop. Uh, and it's done great. Really my only gripe is that it spins up with the fans and gets pretty loud, uh, which kind of sucks, depending on how you're using the Thunderbolt ports. Uh, otherwise, it's been a solid performer. Can't wait for Apple to give us something like this with their new CPUs. So looking forward to seeing that someday. But for now, this guy, killing it. Instead of using a bucket full of dongles, I've been using this to connect my MacBook to all the accessories and peripherals. It is the CalDigit TS something something, TS3 maybe, uh, and it's a little box that supplies power to the laptop as well as giving you a ton of Thunderbolt, USB, SD card slots, uh, Ethernet, and more. So a great little tiny thing under $300 that is awesome. So I have several of these for our different machines around the studio, one at home, and I just love a single cable going into the MacBook and then a ton of IO options uh, as well as charging. So great option to consider if you're using a Thunderbolt MacBook. Next up is a giant keyboard that you guys have asked about and I absolutely adore. So a lot of people don't know this, but I'm super into mechanical keyboards and this bad boy is amazing. It is a full-size keyboard. You can get it in a 10 keyless if you want and it is made of steel and aluminum. So uh, people who I have picked this up just start giggling because it gets pretty close to like a red camera when it comes to weight. So really, really heavy duty, sounds amazing. 
We've got simple brown switches on here with some really nice SA profile keys. Just an awesome keyboard. This is how we interact with the world. So I'd recommend, you know, you spend some money on a really nice keyboard. It's really hard to go back. So love this thing, not cheap, but you just can't beat it. My next favorite item from 2020 has to be the Peak Design Backpack. There's a couple different models. I'll link to the one that I have down below. And I just love this thing. I actually took it on an international trip before the you know what hit the world, or at least the United States. Uh, and I really, really enjoy this. It is not really a camera only backpack. It's a great everyday backpack, which is in the name of this thing. So I love it because I can one day haul a bunch of gear, which it holds a ton. Trust me, you can put a cinema camera in this thing. Uh, but it's also great if you're just going to go back and forth to work. Uh, maybe you bring cameras home one day and then you need to return with a bunch of files. It's just awesome how it works. I love the magnetic latching system. Sorry about the noise, but um, it's really, really great. It's just a phenomenally made backpack that you can use for all kinds of different stuff, which I really appreciate. Next on the list, we have the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, and that thing is just an incredible device. I've used it a ton this year. I also built a custom case for it, which you can check out, and I might have an update to that whole project, so maybe there'll be a form in the description below if you want to stay updated, but really awesome device. If you do anything with cameras interfacing with your computer, that thing is a must. The switching, the recording, uh, I really want that new ISO model too. So love that thing to death. Next up, I have a really interesting piece of grip equipment. I actually don't know what this is called, so I'll put it down in the description, but essentially it's two grip heads put together. So in theory, you can see there's kind of a female uh, a connector here. I could drop this onto a C stand, and now I have two arms that I can run independently of each other off of that C stand, but that's not all. There's also a baby pin on it. So you could, in theory, mount a light to it, mount a bounce card on one arm, and then a piece of diffusion on the other, or three lights. There's just so many different ways to use it. So a really, really interesting piece from Avenger Gear. I'll put a link in the description so all you rigging nerds like me can go ahead and check it out. Another support piece of gear that I use a lot this year is the Arc 2 from Rhino. This thing makes getting repeatable smooth shots just so easy. I've done a full review. You can watch if you're looking for some kind of slider. Motion control system for B-roll or really anything it's hard to beat this guy and i just love this thing so those are the things i got the most joy out of using this year i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you guys enjoyed using this year if there's any piece of gear that just made life nice for you i'd love to hear about it finally i just want to say thank you to all of you who subscribed liked videos shared watched these videos um, i'm so fortunate to have such a wonderful wonderful subscriber base so you guys are amazing. I hope we can see each other before too long. I want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, 2020 is just about done and really looking forward to hanging out with you guys in 2021. So have a wonderful rest of your year and day. We'll see you guys in the next video.